I feel like makeup is the bane of my existence. Bane. You guys like my bane impression? Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Rebecca Lease, and this is my YouTube channel, UX Specs, where we talk about everything user experience, instructional design, and data science. Today we're going to talk about my top 10 techniques for engaging online students. One of the most often questions I get as a university instructor is what's the difference between campus and online, and how do students have to behave differently? One of the things that I stress when I get asked this question is that there's a lot more self-regulation and diligence that needs to go into your daily habits in order to be able to successfully complete online programs. The reason I say that is because you don't have somebody standing there over your shoulder saying, hey, you need to complete this, you need to do this. You might get an email, but an email is really easy to ignore. Um, a notification is really easy to swipe away things that I encourage my students to be able to do is one, check their communication channels often. The other reason I bring this up is because the COVID pandemic has made it a lot harder for us to be able to work. One of the ways that we motivate ourselves to move forward is to stay accountable to others. And when we're alone at our houses, we're isolated. So my number one technique is to model the behavior. One of the ways that I do this is when I'm working with students on projects, I have them complete a daily stand up that includes what did you do today? What did you do yesterday? What did you, what are you planning to do in the future? And then do you have any blocks? This is something that comes from software development and uh, project management. What this does is this one allows them to see what it's like to complete the process. Two, it allows us to be able to see what each other's doing and be able to understand the full array of tasks that you might have to complete. The other reason I like to model behavior is because there are things in our brains called mirror neurons, which are pretty interesting, but it's the idea behind monkey see, monkey do. You observe somebody else do something and that allows you to be able to easily mimic that behavior because you've seen it done. You know what it should look like. All right. My number two technique is to make your process transparent. Again, this goes back to that daily standup idea. I make my process transparent so that my students know how many tasks I have to do in a day how many things I need to complete in order to move forward. Sometimes I get a little overwhelmed and I also let them know when I'm having issues so that they can see what it's like to move through something that can be frustrating. I also like to give them a healthy perspective of how to deal with criticism. So when I explain my blockers, sometimes it's a really great way for me to be able to model that behavior my third tip for helping your students self-regulate and feel empowered to move forward is to create what's called a retrospective. So a retrospective is another tip that comes from software designs. And this is where at the end of a process, you typically do some kind of review of your performance, the team's performance, how you worked together, how the process is, does the system need to be changed, that type of stuff. So this is a really great way of being able to be self-reflective, which is really a key part of self-regulation. My number four tip for helping students self-regulate is to break down the process of how to build good habit. So there are three different parts to building a good habit. One of them includes the cue, one of them includes the reaction, and one of them includes the reward. So what you want to see is what are the student's cues and uh, does it cue good behavior, bad behavior? You want to be able to look at their behavior, tell them what is good and bad behavior um, in this context, and then move forward from there. And once they know what kind of behavior they should be responding to, then they can create a reaction. If it's a good reaction, you can create a reward for yourself or for the student. This could be something like extra credit points, candy, whatever. You can trick yourself into doing a lot of this stuff using that trick. I use that a lot. I love food. Tip number five is to use data-driven inferences. So what I mean by this is using habit trackers. We talked a little bit about habit trackers in my first to-do list video. 
One of the things that you can do is list all the behaviors that you want to exhibit and then track each day that you exhibit that behavior. You might want to, one, just track the behavior, but two, you might also want to track different details about that behavior. So if you're trying to work out, you might want to track something like the number of reps and sets that you did, or you might want to track how much cardio you did during that day or that workout. My number six tip is to use the Socratic method. So one of the things that I worried about first as an instructor was not knowing everything and not knowing enough. And so one of the things that I learned to be able to do is use the Socratic method, which is basically to ask a question in order to get the answer from that person or be able to uh, show them where their misunderstanding or lack of information is. So that's something that I use often and um, particularly in instances where I'm not really super familiar with the subject. I will preface with the student that I'm not familiar with the subject, but then I will also ask questions as if I'm coming at it from a reviewer's perspective or a project manager's perspective or a producer's perspective. My number seven tip is to use think aloud assignments. This is something that is very similar to think aloud protocols, which is something that is common in user experience. So a think aloud study or protocol is typically where you sit down and you have either a student or a participant go through a task or a process and think aloud what they're going through, their thought process, their mindsets, all the different things that go into completing a task. And that allows the observer to be able to understand the thought process that the user is going through. All right, <clears throat> my number eight tip, Yay. help students explore their why. What is their motivation? What helps them get out of bed in the morning? What helps them move? What helps them get going? If they're interested in cars, then apply mathematics to cars. If they're interested in games, get them into games, but show them how to do physics in games or show them how to do a lot of different things within that game environment. There's a lot of ways of engaging students and knowing their why helps you to be able to engage them more readily. My number nine tip is to focus on the benefits of project management. This is something that I grew up with. My parents are both project managers and it's something that is pretty innate to me for the most part, but I still struggle. And some of the things that I've struggled with, I've noticed that some of my students struggle with. Okay, focus on the benefits of time management. The reason I say this is because a lot of students, especially ones who have had parents who dictate their schedules, have a hard time self-regulating once they get into an online education environment. All right, my number 10 technique is to acknowledge when you see genuine effort. So this is something that is so important. A lot of times students get discouraged very easily, particularly in projects where they're isolated. And the only person that they're having contact with is their instructor. One of the things that I really encourage you to do is make sure that you see when people are reaching out to other teammates, if they have teammates, encourage that behavior, encourage conversations. If you're using any kind of instant messaging service, ask questions, start getting them talking, doing all that type of, type of stuff. All right, just to review the top 10 techniques, it is one, to model behavior, two, make your process transparent, three, use retrospectives, four, break down good habits, five, data-driven inferences, six, using the Socratic method, seven, using think aloud assignments, eight, help them explore their why, nine, focus on benefits of time management, and 10, acknowledge genuine effort. Thank you all for joining me. Please feel free to add your tips and tricks below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification. Boop.